Yes, sir, it's the biggest little city in the world. And by gosh, it's the liveliest. I guess these divorcees figure that as long as they're changing partners, <laughs> they might just as well dance. This your first trip here? Yes. I thought you were strange. Some of them come back so often, I was thinking of printing up commuter's tickets. <laughs> oh, well. I guess divorce ain't much more than a matter of traveling. You check out of the state of matrimony and land in the state of Nevada. I ain't got no complaints, though. Oh, a living to divorces, same as most of the people in this town. And by gosh, it's the one business that even the Depression don't hit. Now, you take wheat, for instance, or cotton. How much farther to the hotel? Oh, you're in a hurry, are you? <laughs> no matter how soon I get you there, lady, it still takes six weeks. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Mrs. Curtis Whitman. I have reservations. Oh, yes, Mrs. Whitman. We have your room ready. I'll notify our social directors that you're here. Is that necessary? I'm rather tired. Not necessary, but we try to make each guest feel that he or she is something more than a guest, especially during these trying days. Now, if you'll just register, please. Miss Wells' office. Try the bar. Try the doc's office, I'd say. Bring Dr. Ainsley. Dr. Ainsley, this is the front desk. Does Miss Wells happen to be there? Certainly. It's for you. Hello? All right, I'll be right out. Another lost soul here for the cure. Shall I give her the bright approach or the sympathetic? I prefer the bright. So I've noticed lately. I'll leave the sympathy for you. You do it so well. 106. You'll find there's never a dull moment at the Hotel Sierra, Mrs. Whitman. We have sunrise trips to points of interest, alimony breakfasts, bridge luncheons, or... Oh, here's Miss Wells. Mrs. Whitman. How do you do, Mrs. Whitman? You've had a long trip, haven't you? Let's have a drink. Oh, thank you, but I don't think I care for one. It, it's rather late Oh, and... come on. You don't want to spend your first evening in that room alone. You're right. I don't. Fine. It's this way. I'll show you your room later. Seventeen and the black. Well, that washes me up. Oh, it's you. Oh, hello, Ainsley. Say, you're a doctor. Save my life and let me have a hundred, will you? Sorry, my office hours are from two to four, but I'll buy a drink. It's awfully generous of you. Here, cash these for me. Maybe that'll help your credit. Meet you at the bar. Place your bets. The same, Mrs. Bentley? Yes, sir. Where's your shadow? Shadow? The official greeter. Greeting a decidedly attractive new arrival. I wouldn't mind having a job myself. <laughs> What's the matter? I'm amused. Well, that must be obvious to everyone in the place. Do you know her? Know her? I'm going to marry her husband. <laughs> Want to meet it? Come on. Number 25 and the <laughs> Well, well. Greetings, salutations, and my heartfelt thanks. Kurt wrote me he'd finally talked you into a divorce, but I didn't expect you so soon. Uh, Dr. Ainsley finds you so attractive, he asked for an introduction. Since you're doing so much for me, why shouldn't I do something for you? The doctor's a bachelor. You'll find him most amusing while you're here. I know I have. Uh, Mrs. Whitman, Dr. Ainsley. How do you do? I'm sorry, Mrs. Whitman, but this seems to be one of those situations that we try to avoid here. Why? I'm going to marry her husband, so what? This is 1939. We're modern. Let's talk things over. Besides, there's lots of things I want to ask you about, Kurt. You know, how he likes his eggs and toast, and is he sometimes cross in the morning, or always as charming as I found him, and all the little things you did that upset him. Let me out, please. Oh, Mrs. Whitman, what are you doing here? Thanks. Don't you know? Why, no. I haven't had the heart to tell the poor boy. Tell me what? I decided that Kurt will make me a better husband. He's more mature. Why, you cheap lying... Don't you call me names, you stupid fool! Oh, my goodness! Is it my fault you're sap enough to trail me everywhere I go? Will you show me my room, please? You're both going up and have a good cry. Shut up. I won't shut up. Mrs. Bentley, I shall have to ask you to leave my hotel. What? You've done nothing but cause trouble since you came here. Well, you can't... I shall expect you to be gone by morning. Behave yourself and sit down. I want a drink. You've had too much to drink already and you've talked too much. You used to be smart. 
Keep on like this and you'll hang yourself. What's the matter? Afraid you'll hang with me? Where have you been? Mrs. Bentley's been ringing for you all evening. What was she ringing for? She knows it's my night off. She's leaving the hotel. You've got to pack. Tonight? And if you want to know, she was thrown out. Oh, now she'll really be hard to work for. What happened? Mrs. Bentley won't be leaving until morning. All right, Mrs. Russell, I'll have her bill ready. Mrs. Bentley? What's the trouble? Mrs. Is someone Bentley. hurt? What's happening oh, here? In there. How did it happen? I don't know. Mrs. Keep everybody. Who is she? What's going on? Is she dead? I think so. Get Dr. Ainsley. I'll telephone the police. Don't look at me like that. I didn't do it. Don't! I didn't do it, I tell you, I didn't! <laughs> Lieutenant Chan, Mr. Curtis Whitman's here to see you. Always pleased to see Mr. Whitman. This way, please. Hello, Charlie. Please pardon the experiment, but must reproduce elusive Easter rabbit for number one grandchild. So glad. Words of welcome freeze when friend appears troubled. You couldn't have seen the papers, Charlie. Please forgive question, but is concerned for living or the dead? Mary is still my wife, in spite of what we'd planned. But she didn't, she couldn't have done this. Man yet to be born who can tell what woman will or will not do. But you know her, you've known her all her life. Yes, very difficult to believe ill of those we love. Oh, I knew you'd feel that way, Charlie. That's why I want you to go with me. Well, they might build up a case against her that we can't break. Oh, she's in a jam and it's... Please, ancient ancestor once say, words cannot cook rice. Then you will go? Swell. I reserve seats on the clipper for both of us. Can you be ready in an hour? We'll go pack and notify family in person. Just so honorable wife will not misunderstand contemplated visit to Reno. Oh. Very objectionable odor, Mr. Chan. Uh, what is it? Just one of my experiments in chemical criminology, sir. You see, I'm working on a new method to bring out fingerprints on cloth. Bring them out? My dear boy, that'll drive them out. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I don't think it turned out just right. Hey, a telegram just came for you, Jimmy. Telegram? Oh, gee, thanks. Do you have to make that stuff? Hey, listen to this. It's from Pop. Honorable Sprout, unexpectedly find self on way to Reno, Nevada. Will visit you before return home. Reno? Is your dad gonna get a divorce? Oh, gee, no. I don't think so. Say, you know that murder we read about and I said I knew the people? Yeah. I'll bet that's what Pop's on his way to Reno for. No, no kidding. kidding. Say, Jack, the Easter holidays start tomorrow and you're not going anywhere. Can I borrow your car? Well, the tank's empty. I'll fill it up. Well, how long are you gonna use it? Oh, I'll be back before vacation's over. 
Hey, wait a minute. That's a week. Oh, don't worry. With me helping Pop, it won't take that long. We'll have this case cleaned up in no time. Young man, you'll clean that up before you clean up any mysteries. Yes, sir. <laughs> What's the trouble? My pal here got smacked by a hit and run. Oh! Is he hurt bad? Looks like it. I gotta get him to a hospital. Oh! Oh! Say, we're only 20 miles from Reno. I'll be glad to take you there. Thanks, buddy. Hey, I'll help you. Oh! 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 oh. to me? Yes, sir, it's the biggest little city in the world, Mr. Chan. I knew you was the famous detective the minute I seen you. Congratulations upon penetrating humble disguise. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. You know, we got a pretty smart police force of our own. Eager to make acquaintance of same. Would kindly drive us there first? To the police station? Please. All right. But if you were here to solve the killing at the Hotel Sierra, you're too late. Those have already arrested the woman that done it. Has unfortunate lady confessed? Nope. Too smart for that. But they got her dead to rights. Motive and everything. It seems her husband and this... Yes, we read all about it in the papers. Yeah, but you didn't see her the night she got here like I did. I knew there was something wrong, even then. She didn't say nothing. Just sat back there, quiet-like, and stared out the window. I figured she was unhappy about a divorce. But of course, now I know she was just sitting back there cooking up the murder. Very interesting evidence. This man will prove most valuable on witness stand. Witness stand? Who, me? I ain't getting mixed up in any murder trials. No, sir, not me. I ain't saying another word. Thank you so much. What's your name? Mr. Jones. Yeah, and I suppose yours is Smith. Correction, please. Lieutenant Chan of Honolulu Police. I thought so. Lieutenant Chan. Oh, yes. The chief is expecting you. This way, sir. Well, Charlie, you old son of a gun. I'm glad to see you again. Sincerely hope status does not change. <laughs> Why should it? Quite possible I make large nuisance of self. Chief of Police King, Mr. Curtis Whitman. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Whitman? Oh. Well, I'm sorry to meet you under these circumstances, Mr. Whitman. I know you're anxious to talk about the case, Charlie, but I'm on my way to the shore. I'd like to have you come with me. Won't take long. Thank you. Disorderly conduct, drunk, heaving brick through a window, hitting two police. Take them away, Clancy. Oh, that helps me. <laughs> Boys, we've got a distinguished visitor today, an old pal of mine from Honolulu, Charlie Chan. So this is oh, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, it's 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 a pleasure. pleasure. So please, sit right down here, Charlie. And we'll show you the choicest collection of con men and crack spots you've ever seen. Uh, meet Sheriff Fletcher. Most honored to meet, illustrious Sheriff. Oh, All yeah. right. I've heard a lot about you, too. And uh, this is a friend of Lieutenant Chan's, Mr. Whitman. How are you? Whitman? That name sounds familiar. It ought to. That's the case you're on. That's where I heard it. Well, Chan, I reckon you ain't here with Whitman for nothing. Excellent observation. Then we might as well understand each other right now. Me and King got this case well in hand, and we don't need no outside help or interference. Don't mind him, Charlie. He's known as Tombstone. I guess you can figure out why. Tombstones often engraved with words of wisdom. Yeah, and ain't all of them covered with moss, either. Now that you're here, young fella, there's a couple of questions I'd like to ask you. I know as little about this as you do. Yeah. All right, let's get on with the show up. Bring him in, Mac. All right, come on, you guys, and make it snappy. Get up on there. Quit pushing. Quiet. Hurry along. You're going to be sorry for this. Get up on there.
Take off your hats. Anything wrong, Charlie? Sudden shock to eyesight. Not permanent, I hope. Step forward. You two. What's the charges on this kid? Violation of ordinances 106, 109, 214A. And suspected of being nuts. I am not nuts. I told him how some hitchhiker stole all my clothes and a car I borrowed. Violent, too. What's your name, Bob? It's Jimmy Chan, sir. And my father's Charlie Chan. Everybody's heard of him. Mm-hmm. And I suppose you'd recognize your famous pa if you was to see him? Of course I would. Well, here. Pop! Am I glad to see you? You mean he's really your son? Must admit to dubious honor. Pop, tell these guys I'm not crazy. Parent must first convince self of same. Possible to release offspring in my custody? Sure, now that he's been identified. Thank you. Now, will kindly explain presence here? Oh, I just came up during the holidays to help you catch the murderer. Pop appreciates valuable help of number two son. But first, use talent to catch new pair of pants. Oh, thanks. Uh, don't do anything on this case until I get back. Is he going to be on the case, too? Self-appointed. He ain't the only one. What's your name? Who, me? I'm Charlie Chan's number three son. Me go home now? Charlie. Oh, Charlie, I didn't do it. You know I didn't do it. I brought somebody. Kurt. Thank you for coming, Kurt. Are you all right? I mean, don't worry about anything. Charlie's here to help you. Sit down, please. Now, I want you to tell me exactly what occurred on night of murder. Well, I was in bed, but not asleep. What time, please? About 12.30. While I was lying there, I, I heard a scream. Not loud, but close to my room. And it was cut off sharply. Frightened me, and I got up to see what was wrong. How long after scream before you reach hallway? Oh, I don't know. A minute, maybe longer. You saw no one in corridor? No. But the door opposite mine was open a little, and the light was on. I looked in and saw her lying on the floor. Even when I reached her, I didn't recognize her at first. She was wearing some sort of beauty mask that completely covered her face. Police have pictures? Yes. Here, you can have this set. Thank you so much. Continue, please. I started to touch her, and, and I saw the blood. And then I recognized her by her hair. Oh, it all happened so fast, Charlie, and it was such a shock to me. I don't know what I did. I, I just stood and looked at her, I guess. And, and then suddenly the Chinese maid was screaming and people ran into the room and... They accused me. Police have reason to doubt truth of story? We ain't got no reason to believe it. She had plenty of motive, too. Why, only an hour or two before Mrs. Bentley was stabbed, this woman and her had a fight in the hotel bar over her stealing her husband. Oh, but I wasn't the only one she quarreled with. You were the only one found standing over the body. May I humbly request one more favor. Please arrange for Mrs. Whitman to return to hotel. What? Turn loose the only suspect we got? Can promise she will not attempt to leave Reno. Chief, this Oriental's loco. If you think you're going to take her out of here like you did your son, you got another thing coming. Please. Victim was stabbed, you say? Victim? Oh, she was stabbed, all right, with some kind of a knife. Was weapon found on Mrs. Whitman? Well, no, but she might have got rid of it. Exactly what kind of knife, please? How should I know? We ain't found it yet. That's what has a stump, Charlie. The knife is still missing. Then police believe Mrs. Whitman foolish enough to kill, leave room to hide death weapon, then return to be discovered beside body of victim? Well, my theory is she came back for something. Something she dropped. Such as? You can ask the doggondest questions, 
Chief, are you going to be taken in by a lot of polite bowing and scraping? You know we haven't got enough evidence for an indictment, Tombstone. Yeah, but who's going to be responsible for her? Suggest husband, number one man, for job. Her husband? First thing I know, you'll be asking me to swear Whitman in as a deputy. Can think of no one with better reason for wishing to capture murderer. I'll see what the DA says about releasing her, Charlie. Thank you so much. Doggonest detective I ever saw. He's taking them out of here faster than we can put them in. Excuse me, Sheriff. What you hiding for? Are you shadowing someone? I ain't hiding. I got orders to stick around and help your pa, so I'm giving him plenty of rope. Where's he now? In there talking to the owner of the hotel. Oh. So right after the quarrel in the bar, I took Mrs. Whitman up to her room. I stayed with her for some time because she was pretty upset. And I don't blame her. She took an awful beating from that Bentley woman. Mrs. Bentley, very unpopular. That's putting it mildly. We leave unlamented lady here to divorce self from present husband. Yes. A George Bentley from San Francisco. So far, we haven't been able to locate him. No one claimed body? Her family. The police shipped it back east yesterday. Murder room still intact? Yes. And locked, of course. Would like to visit same now. Certainly. Mind if I snoop along? Charming company turned lowly sandwich into rich banquet. <laughs> Hiya, Pop. How'd you like my new hat? Off head at present. Oh, sure. Sorry. Excuse, please. This is number two son, masquerading as Lone Ranger. Hello. How do you do? Say, are you getting ready to visit the scene of the crime? Yes. Would Honorable Sheriff wish to come? Heck, I've been through that room so much, I could search it with my eyes shut. Thank you. We'll search then this time with eyes open. took the pass key off my ring. The pass key? Yes, ma'am. I left it hanging outside while I did 108, and when I come out, it was gone. Gee, maybe the murderer took it. The murder? Oh, oh. Quiet. Call the desk and see if it's been turned in there. I did, and it ain't. Oh, ma'am, do you think I think you'll find it. And please don't mention it to anyone. Oh, Dr. Ainsley, what are you doing here? I just remembered something that happened the night of the murder. Oh, uh, this is Charlie Chan, the detective. How do you do? Most gratifying to meet hostess who remembers job at all times. I get it. You think I was trying to warn him for some reason? Is there any reason to warn, honorable doctor? Say, you don't waste any time, do you? Well, I'm not any good at hiding it, so I may as well confess. I'm rather fond of the honorable doctor. I must admit, this doesn't look so hot. What were you doing here? Looking for the money Mrs. Bentley won the night she was murdered. Oh, don't you think you'd better leave the searching to the police? They did search this room, but it suddenly occurred to me that no mention was made of finding the money. You see, Mr. Chan, the jealousy angle was so strong against Mrs. Whitman that no one thought of a simple robbery motive. Most happy to consider same. Was it large sum, lady one? Large enough for her to be paid off in a stack of hundred dollar bills. Wally Burke cashed in her chips and handed her the money during the quarrel in the bar. I remember now. Hey, cut it out! That hurts! Take your hands off me, you big hick! I haven't done anything! Come peaceable now, or I'll get rough. What's all this about, Sheriff? Burke knows he ain't supposed to leave town, yet I just caught him trying to pay his bill and check out. Pay his bill? With what? Money. What'd you think? That's funny. I thought he was broke. What gave you that idea? Well, you tried to borrow some from me the other night. I wired home for it. Any business of yours? No. 
But it might be of interest to Mr. Chan. Well, what is all this? Was under impression Mrs. Bentley was friend of yours. She was. Surprised then you unwilling to assist police by remaining in hotel. Since you put it that way, of course I'll stay. You'll stay no matter which way we put it. Did Sheriff notice if Mr. Burke have hundred dollar bills? He was downright filthy with them. I better lock him up. No. Most inadvisable. If want Wild Bird to sing, do not put him in cage. Maybe he won't sing, but leastwise he won't take off either. Check later with Telegraph Company concerning story of Mr. Burke about cash. Okay, Pop, I'll handle that. Well, if I can be of any further help, I'll... I'll trouble you for that pass key you took from the maid. The maid? I didn't take any key from her. This is the one I used. The night clerk gave it to me last week in an emergency case. I forgot to return it, and it's been in my desk ever since. With gracious permission of hostess, we'll resume conversation later. All right. And I'll be looking forward to it, because never have I so politely been told to scram. And now, please, would like to occupy this room during stay in hotel. This room? Yes. Gosh, it hasn't been more than three days since Mrs. Bentley was killed in here. Yet room continues to attract visitors. And passkey still missing. You mean we're gonna sleep in here and wait for somebody to sneak in on us? Perhaps sleep more attractive in university classroom? Oh, no. I don't mind. Those things don't affect me. I was just thinking about you, that's all. It might be dangerous. I agree with him, Mr. Chen. When searching for needle in haystack. Haystack, only sensible location. Very well. I'll have her things packed and moved out when you're ready. One moment. Have kept Mrs. Whitman's room? Yes, why? Expect her here this afternoon. She's being released? In custody of husband. Oh, I'm so glad. Perhaps somebody else not so glad. Request no mention be made of releases yet. I understand. Thank you so much. These police pictures sure are spooky. Death usually grim. What was she wearing the mask for? Lady using new psychology on wrinkles scares them away. Oh. Gee, this Mrs. Bentley sure liked herself. She kept a publicity scrapbook, just like a movie actress. Where do you find scrapbook? Huh? Right here, on the trunk. Police pictures indicate scrapbook on vanity when body discovered. Then somebody's moved it since the murder. Say, do you suppose this Burke fellow might have killed her for the money? Possible. Look for scissors among ladies' effects. Okay. Uh, any particular kind? Straight edge indicate use of long desk shears. You mean it might have been used as a death weapon? If closed would leave wound as described by police surgeon? Gee, then I'd better look hard. And if I don't find any, it'll look like we're right. I don't see any in here. Find something important, Pop? What I do not find is more important. What do you mean? Pages covering 1935 and 36 have been removed. Why do you suppose? Someone strangely anxious to conceal ladies' activities during those years. Continue search for scissors. Okay. What's the matter? What's happened? Get a load of that Honolulu bloodhound. Sounds good. Well, what about him? What about him? Looks like his nose just led him straight to the bar. Did you get me over here just to show me that? Ain't it enough? Listen, Tombstone, I knew Charlie was throwing this party. He's doing it for a special reason. And I want you to stay out of it. I'll stay out of it. 
Well, while he's wasting his time in there drinking, where is that murderer he was so sure of catching? Well, he may be drinking with him. Then why don't he arrest him? Relax, will you? And for heaven's sake, don't call me again unless it's important. There. Thank you. What's in it, Mr. Chan? Something to loosen the tongue? Humble Hawaiian drink, very mild. I'll stick to bourbon. Do we uh, toast with humble drink or just dive into it? Suggest toast to a very gracious woman and unhappy husband now entering. You don't have to hold your chin quite that high, Mary. But they stared so. How long do we have to stay? Well, Charlie said for just one drink. We can go someplace else for dinner. I just want to get back up to my room. All right, Mary. Anything you say. So tell me, Mr. Chan, have they dropped the case against Mrs. Whitman entirely? Police realize evidence very weak. Personally, I don't think much of the motive. You do not find Mr. Whitman attractive? I couldn't be attracted to any man who was stupid enough to fall for Jean Bentley. Well, thanks. Perhaps acquaintance with murdered lady too brief to learn real character. It took me a couple of months, but I finally found her out. It didn't take me long. The minute she walked in the hotel, I had her labeled. That was first meeting with Mrs. Bentley? Yes. And you, Dr. Ainsley? Oh, I never knew her before she came here. Why should you ask me? Was only asking if you require to have glass refilled. Oh, uh, yes, yes, thanks. That was slick, Mr. Chan. But if you're trying to find someone who knew her before she came here, why don't you just ask us? Have asked. All except Mrs. Russell. I didn't know her. Mr. Burke, it looks like you're still leading the pack. What are you trying to do? Oh, don't be stuffy. If you did do it, I'm all for you. That woman had at least one murder coming to her. Would you have killed Mrs. Bentley? Probably. If she'd annoyed me enough, and then I'd have been handy. Lady killed with scissors. Not knife. Scissors? What kind of scissors? Very sharp, pointed on end, and long enough to inflict very deep wound. Implying surgical scissors? Found doctor's office well equipped with same. I didn't know you had called. So sorry, doctor, not in. Are you accusing me? What possible motive could he have had? None. But Mr. Burke seems to have had plenty. Mr. Burke, just a minute. This is the second time you've tried to pin this thing on me. What's on your mind? Well, you never explained where you got the money. Come on, I don't want you to get mixed up. You stay out there. Come on. Give me the police station, quick. Give me the chief. Hurry. Yes, King speaking. What? I said you knew he was throwing the party, but did you know he was staging a riot? Well, stop it, you fool, before somebody gets hurt. Okay, but you told me to keep out of it. Think he's hurt badly? I hope not. Who hit me? Oh, you hurt, Mr. Fletcher. You're darn tootin' I'm hurt. I got a good mind to arrest the whole bunch of you. I'll take him to his room. All he needs is a sedative. He'll sleep it off. Perhaps you had better assist, doctor. If honorable sheriff will permit, think head need examination. It's not my head that needs examining. It's the peoples that let you come in here and stir up a lot of trouble. Regret accident, but sometimes must strike innocent to trap guilty. Yeah? Well, if you think you're going to use my skull for bait, you're crazy. Thank you so much. Mr. Chan? Yes? Telephone. Oh. Yes? Hello? Pop? I just got the report from the telegraph office. Wally Burke's family cabled him $1,500 yesterday. Oh. Can I join the party now? Party all finished. Hey, Pop, somebody's trying to get in here. What? Oh. 
Oh, gee, I, I'm awfully sorry. Hello, Pop. Pop, humbly suggest you assist young lady to rise. Oh, sure. Uh, gee, I hope I didn't hurt you. My dignity is slightly bruised, but no bones broken. Excuse, please. Can you explain presence in this room? Uh, yes, honorable sir. Are you Charlie Chan? Doctor, praise in any language very sweet. What young lady have not yet explained presence here? My name is Choi Wong, honorable sir. Gee, that's a pretty name. Uh, isn't it, Pop? My name's Jimmy. Jimmy Chan is also a nice sounding name. <laughs> uh, if Choi Wong will be so kind, have not yet explained presence in this room. I was told that I'm now free to pack Mrs. Bentley's clothes. Obtain key from clerk? Why, yes, sir. Gosh, Pop, you don't think that she... Uh... Was personal maid to deceased lady? Worked for her in 1935 or 6? Why, no. She engaged me in San Francisco a month ago and brought me here. Ever glanced through lady's scrapbook? I looked at some of the pictures. Were pages torn out when Choi Wong looked at book? No, I'm sure they weren't. Is it all right for her to pack now? Yes. I'd better help you. We might find something important. You'd better clear out the closet first. All right. Oh, Charlie. We've got something to show you. I found this in Wally Burke's room. As you see, the scissors are missing. Gee, they'd be just the size we're looking for. And it's got his initials on it, too. Mr. Burke aware of discovery? No, the doctor spotted it while I was trying to quiet Burke. Administer sedative? Yes, he'll be asleep for some time. We'll question young man when he wakes up. Thank you so much. Assistance greatly appreciated. Burke's in the clear about that money he got, but he'll have a tough time explaining this. Can you recall last time Mrs. Bentley wore riding boots? The day before she was killed. She went out early in the morning and didn't get back till noon. Say, if she was on a horse, where'd she get all that mud and those scratches? Most clever deduction. Lady did not remain on horse. Hold <laughs> boots, please. Do you think we've got something, Pop? Time and analysis will tell. Can reach me at police station if needed. Okay. Don't worry. I'll keep an eye on things here. I'm certain can depend on say. Pop sure is smart. He doesn't miss a thing. Except the son moving the furniture. Oh, you, you mean that bench over there? That wasn't anything. I just dropped a cigarette and burned a hole in the rug. Does Honorable Father think you're too young to smoke? Oh, no, I'm no kid. I help him solve his cases. You do? Yeah, uh, and I've got an idea how to solve this one. Do you want to help me? Yes, if I don't get killed. Uh, I wouldn't want you to do anything dangerous. I think you're very nice. What do you want me to do? Well, uh, I haven't got it all doped out yet. Uh, do you mind if I smoke? It helps me to think. Drive to police station, please. Okay, but I still ain't talking. Excellent. Oh, now, Priscilla. I told you not to follow me. I'm working. Well, I just talked with the New York police. They're putting men on the 1935 and 36 newspaper files right away, and they're going to check up on Mrs. Bentley's bank account. Thank you so much. Oh, what did you find on the boots? Plenty of sand, some pollen from desert flowers, red clay, a suggestion of copper shavings, and horse feathers. And minute splinters from very old wood. Copper and old wood suggest abandoned mine. Yes, well, there are lots of those around here, but the red clay narrows it to someplace south of town. 
distance also limited. Lady must ride there on horse, transact mysterious business, and return to hotel by noon. I see. Honorable chemist suggests uh, old wood might possibly indicate ghost town. Yes, that's right. Oh, wait a minute, I know one. Yes, here it is. There it is, right there. It's up in the hills, about four miles off the main road. It's beyond Dead Man's Canyon. Yes, there's plenty of red clay in that district. And the old Sully Copper Mines were there, too. That fits the analysis. It's about the only one that fits the distance. See, if you're interested, I'll have Tombstone drive you up there in the morning. A visit to Dead Man's Canyon with Tombstone, very appropriate. <laughs> we'll consider same tomorrow. Uh, you want him to drive you back to the hotel? Uh, have hotel driver waiting. Uh, thank you so much. Goodbye. Hey, what are you going to do? I'm going right along after that guy. He started one riot tonight, and I aim to see he don't start no more. Darn if I can figure why you want to drive way out here this time of night for. I have strong desire to visit real ghost town. But it ain't nothing to look at even in the daytime. You'll see for yourself in a minute. It's just around the bend. Please turn off all lights when entering abandoned village. What for? Do not wish to alarm sleeping ghosts. Wish to wait here? If you don't mind, I think I would. It's only you, Sheriff. Hello. Where's that Chan fella? He's wandering around somewheres looking for ghosts. Ghosts nothing. He's up to something and I aim to find out what it is. He can't give me the slip and get away with it. Are you trying to be funny? I don't think so. I ain't laughing. What's that? It ain't mice. Come on, whoever you are, with your hands in the air.
What was that? That ain't no cow. You're darn tootin' it ain't. Come on. Channel. I got him bulldog. Boy, this is a mining engineer's kit. Wait, wait till you get a load of these papers. Bentley, the dead woman's husband? How did he get away? Regret scuffle which occurred in dark to Mr. Bentley's advantage. But have written description of car with number of license. Suggest you circulate same. And how I'll circulate it. This puts an entirely new light on the case. He's been out there all this time in hiding. And I want to know why. Also why wife visit him in secret. Mm. Send out a general alarm for this car. The driver is thought to be George Bentley, wanted in connection with his wife's murder. You'll probably try to leave the state, so notify all state and county highway patrols to be on the lookout. Yes, sir. I've got a hunch that when we get him, we'll have our murderer. Sure be a relief to me to get off of this merry-go-round. Don't you ever solve any of your cases in the daytime? My feet hurt. <laughs> Chief King speaking. What? All right, we'll be over right away. That was your son. Something's happened at the hotel. You must hurry. Excuse me, please. All right, break it up, folks. Break it up. One side, please. One side. What's wrong, Peters? Oh, this fellow trying to sneak out of the hotel. With these, Pop. The ones we were looking for. I told the officer that somebody might try to do this, and sure enough, it was him. You've got a lot of explaining to do, Burke. I want a lawyer. They won't be hard. Half the population of Reno is lawyers. These are yours? Yes. But I didn't kill her. Someone's trying to make it look like I did. And I know who it is. Just a minute, Sit down. Fellow. Please, have not explained scissors. Jean borrowed them from me over a week ago and never returned them. So when I heard she'd been stabbed with scissors, why... I... Who said she was stabbed with scissors? Lieutenant Chan. And the police surgeon confirmed it. Go on. Don't tell me anything. I'll just wait till the whole thing is solved and read about it in the papers. I'm sorry, Tombstone. I thought you knew it. All right, go on, Mr. Burke. Well, I naturally figured she was killed with my scissors. Explain present possession and attempt to dispose of same. Dr. Ainsley gave me a sedative, and when I woke up, the scissors were on my table. Someone put them there, but with all the accusations that have been made against me, no one would have believed that. I, well, I had to get rid of them. Mr. Chen, there's something queer about all this. You I'll bet your life there is. Somebody planted these in my room, and if they did it for a joke, I don't think it's funny. Excuse, please, you were speaking when Lady interrupted. I was just going to say that I found a pair of desk shears exactly like those in my room tonight. What? Doctor also finds similar pair? Yes. Well, how did you know? Have theory. It better be good. They couldn't have all killed her. Would like to see scissors, please. Bring the ones up from my office, too. Certainly. Number two son finally win jackpot? Uh, what do you mean? Scissors cost money. Oh, I had some money left after I bought this suit. What are you talking about? Think ambitious young detective can explain confusion of scissors. Well, uh, I figured that if all the suspects found scissors in the rooms, the one that was guilty would try to get rid of them. And it worked, too. You mean you planted them, son? Yes, sir. I'm as much to blame as Jimmy is. He thought of it, but I'm the one who did it. <laughs> oh, boy, am I relieved. I found these under a cushion of a chair in Mary's room. But we didn't put any scissors in Mrs. Whitman's room. What? You didn't? No, sir, we couldn't get in. That policeman was on guard outside the door. Yeah, on my orders. And it looks like I was pretty smart, too. Now what have you got to say, Mr. Chan? But I didn't have them there. I didn't know anything about them. 
Have you got that leather case, Charlie? Uh, on desk. Here they are. What's happened? Uh, bring scissors, please. These are the ones that were found in Mrs. Whitman's room? Yes. These have the same trademark as the letter opener. I'm afraid there's no doubt that these are the ones she was stabbed with. You're afraid? You got the goods on her the second time, and you got him trying to hide incriminating evidence. So you apologize. Horse feathers, I ain't losing no more time. Wait a minute, Tombstone. What are you going to do? To see the district attorney right now, and I'm going to tell him everything we got on this woman. And I'll lay you a ten to one he'll have before the grand jury by morning. Kurt, stop it, please. You're blaming yourself for showing them the scissors. Of course I am. All I want is to help you, and oh, I've made things worse. I know you wanted to help. But what did you think when you found them? That's what matters. You must have thought I was guilty. I didn't think anything except that I was responsible. Come in, Charlie. Sometimes tears from woman, very happy sign. I'm pretty scared, Charlie. No need to be. At moment, police are searching for a man who is very likely suspect. And when... What is it? Have burned sleeve. Well, you don't smoke, Mary. How did you do it? I don't know. I, I didn't even notice. I haven't had it on since... Since when? Since the night I found Mrs. Bentley. Please, return with me to room. Jimmy, Lone Ranger's hat bad enough without wearing horses' blankets. Oh, you mean these pajamas, Pop? I didn't buy them. I found them in your bag. They're the ones Mom gave you for Christmas. <laughs> Although 3,000 miles away, honorable wife still make presents felt. <laughs> Please. Mary, would like you to repeat actions on finding body. All right. I, uh, I saw her from the hall and crossed over to the dressing table. She was lying here between the bench and... Well, the, the bench wasn't here. Uh, can you remember exact position of bench? Not exactly, but uh, it was something like that. What's the matter? What is it, Charlie? First bright light in very dense fog. You mean a clue to the murder? Gee, Pop, I, I can't let you get sidetracked that way. I burned it with a cigarette. Frog burned with acid, not cigarette. Acid? How about Mary's sleeve? Also acid. Why, there is some there. It must have been spilled here and dripped down. If Mary leaned here, that explains the burn in the sleeve. Gee, it's a good thing you didn't get any on your arm, Mrs. Whitman. Nitric acid leaves a nasty burn. Number two son think it nitric acid? Well, it could have been. It eats through anything but glass. I've seen one bottle of nitric acid tonight, but bottle full. What would acid be doing here? Think answer may be found in second bottle. Not so full. Nitric acid? Yes, I have some. That's funny. I could have sworn this bottle was full. No one have occasion to use same? No. Excuse. What is purpose of gauze? It prevents breaking and leakage. Why? 
gauze on this different weave and quality from gauze on other bottle? It shouldn't be. They're all shipped from the same firm. With permission, we'll keep till morning. Certainly. But do you think it's connected with the murder? Person who removed pages from Mrs. Bentley's scrapbook may have answer. Pages from her scrapbook? Covering years 1935 and 36. Thought doctor may have noticed when searching ladies' room. No, I didn't. Thank you so much. Label this gauze from Wally Birch room. Okay. Who's next? Miss Wells, but you'd better search her room. All right. But what if they catch me? Oh, don't you worry. I'll be right behind you. Yes? Oh, good morning. That's your life. It's a good morning. We've got Bentley, the husband. Good. Tombstone's on his way over to Tornopar to pick him up. But I've got some real news from New York. Yeah. The police checked on Mrs. Bentley's New York bank account. She wrote two checks this month for fifteen hundred apiece. And who do you think they were made out to? Dr. Ainsley. That is highly interesting. You check on newspaper files? And how? Say, no wonder somebody wanted to get rid of the pages of that scrapbook. They're dynamite. Get this. In 1935, Jean was married to a man named Russell. Russell? Related to Mrs. Russell here? Her ex-husband. And he died suddenly in 1936. What was cause of death? According to the attending physician, Russell died of a heart attack. But the attending physician was our old friend, Dr. Ainsley. Must see Mrs. Russell at once. Very urgent. They just found Mrs. Russell in a room, strangled. Lady dead? I don't know. The maid found her and called Dr. Ainsley. Dr. Ainsley? Doctor with her now? Yes. Hurry. Come along. Lift her arm to the outside of the covers, please. Doctor. One moment. What are you giving her? Adrenaline. She's got to have a heart stimulant. Well, take, please. What's the matter, Mr. Chan? Have you gone mad? Examination of hypodermic will determine that. Jimmy! I got it, Pop! Thank you so much. Let me have that, please. Keep this man covered, Peters. I'll call the police surgeon. Choi Wong, stay with lady. Can't help when police surgeon arrive. Jimmy. You search rooms for gauze? Yeah. This was in Wally Burke's room. I guess the doctor used it last night to patch him up after the fight. And this was in Miss Wells' room, in the wastebasket. Neither one of them matches the gauze on the nitric acid bottle, but I brought them along anyway. We didn't get a chance to look in here. Can look now. Yes. This is it. It matches. That means that Mrs. Russell took the acid from the doctor's office. Do you suppose that she... Please. You will take all exhibits to a room and guard carefully. If lady recovers sufficiently to talk, bring all suspects to scene of crime. Oh. Also request everyone wear same clothes as night of murder. Come on. What are you bringing me here for? Oh, ain't you heard? We don't put people in jail no more. We take them to the best hotel, give them music with their meals, and hot and cold running water, and... 
Horse feathers, come on. Stick around if you like, Mr. Whitman, but Charlie doesn't want you inside. Okay, I guess Charlie knows what he's doing. I'll wait downstairs. Joe, keep your eye on the elevator and the stairs. You boys stick here and don't let anybody leave this room, you understand? Yes, sir. What's going on? Charlie's called all the suspects together. He's going to produce the murderer. He's going to produce the murderer? After I drive to Tona Paw to pick him up? Go on in, Burke. Well, I'm a cockeyed son of a gun if this don't beat all. What's the matter? I knew that Chan fellow was fancy, but if you can't hold an inquest without making it formal, I give up. Relax, will you? All right, go in, ladies, please. Come on, he's probably serving cocktails again. I've been called together because each of you had very strong reason for hating Mrs. Bentley. One of you had motive powerful enough to kill. Here is lady whose husband was stolen from her by murdered woman five years ago. Here is young man, blindly in love until eyes rudely opened by ugly insult in public. Miss Wells, impulsive young lady in love with doctor, has admitted she would have killed Mrs. Bentley if given sufficient provocation. Just a minute, just a minute. You're taking them from left to right. You just skipped your friend, Mrs. Whitman. She's still the only one found with the body. We'll neglect no one. Here is husband. Most anxious to get rid of wife. Only in a legal, straightforward manner. Then why were you hiding out in that ghost town? I'm a mining engineer. I got a job to look over those mines. After Jean had established residence in Reno. I was afraid if I was seen here, it would look like collusion. And the divorce wouldn't be granted. Or maybe you thought you had a perfect alibi. That no one would suspect you of murdering your wife if she was giving you a divorce. Yeah, if you're so all fired innocent, why did you put up such a scrap last night and then run away? I didn't know you were connected with the police. I found a man sneaking around my place, so I jumped him. You would have done the same thing. Horse feathers. I'm arresting you. Tombstone. He's already under arrest. Why did wife visit you on day before murder? She was panicky. Said she needed $5,000 right away. Did you give it to her? I didn't have it. Did she say why she wanted it? No. Think Dr. Ainsley can furnish answer to that. What do you mean? Doctor said had known Mrs. Bentley only three weeks, yet signed false certificate on death of first husband, Wayne Russell, three years ago. False certificate? You mean she killed him? Cancel checks prove Mrs. Bentley paid Dr. Ainsley large sums of money to keep guilty secret. If I'd known that, I... Didn't you? No. Then please explain why you visit Mrs. Bentley with acid bottle. How did you know? We know you were here. I came to disfigure her. When Mrs. Whitman arrived at the hotel and I saw what happened, I realized that Jean was going to ruin her life, the same as she'd ruined mine. All the hate I'd felt came back to me. I got the acid from the doctor's office. But found lady's face protected by beauty mask. That's it. Then you grabbed the scissors and stabbed her. Mrs. Russell, I arrest you in the name of the law. I didn't kill her. When Jean saw the acid, she grabbed for it. Said she'd give me a dose of my own medicine. I kept her from getting it, but some of the acid was spilled. When I left her, she was very much alive. But now I understand what happened. When she couldn't get the $5,000 from Bentley, the doctor killed her. He didn't. Missing $100 bills found in doctor's room prove he was here on night of murder. Well, what if he was? If he was blackmailing Mrs. Bentley, would he be stupid enough to kill his meal ticket? You keep out of this. I won't keep out of it. Excuse. Miss Wells, very calm young lady, except where doctor is concerned. Well, do you think I'm going to let a bunch of blundering fools spin a murder on him? What time was it when you brought the acid up here? After 12. And she was alive then. Dr. Ainsley came up here at 10 minutes of 10 and left at 11 o'clock. I know, because I was waiting for him in the office. Waiting with watch in hand? What do you mean? Such careful check on time, highly suggestive of jealousy. What are you doing now, accusing her? Have accused no one as yet. Merely search for truth. What about Mrs. Russell? 
She admits coming up here with the acid. And yet you take her word for it that she left without killing her. Please. Can I explain bandage found in room? Who found it in my room? Number two son. Most ambitious amateur sleuth. A lot of people found scissors in their room, and they were planted by number two son. So what does that prove, Mr. Charlie Chan? Look out, your, your, your sleeve's on fire. Oh, fire. fire! Stop it! Let go Let of me! Stop it! Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Stop it! What happened, Charlie? Merely experiment with liquid smoke. Quite harmless, but highly successful in trapping murderers. Honorable Sheriff may now make arrest. Who, her? Uh-uh. I ain't making no more arrests until I got the evidence. Burn on arm received from nitric acid when Miss Wells reached for scissors to stab Mrs. Bentley. Evidence of guilt, quite apparent in desperate desire to hide Burn. Sorry to resort to trick, but lady make fatal mistake by wearing jacket she did not wear on night of murder. Just a minute. Where do you think you'll get with that evidence? Never mind. Mr. Chan's right. I did kill her. But I didn't intend to. I didn't even bring a weapon. I only wanted to find out what was between her and Dr. Ainsley. But she wouldn't tell me. She was drunk and nasty. And when I threatened to get the truth out of him, she went for me. She'd have killed me. So I grabbed up the first thing I saw to defend myself. You've got to believe me. Sincerely hope will convince jury of same. One moment, please. May also arrest doctor. What for? Analysis of hypodermic revealed deadly poison, not adrenaline. What? Has there been another murder? No, Tombstone. Attempted murder. Dr. Ainsley tried to kill Mrs. Russell. Why? Doctor guessed it was Mrs. Russell who removed pages from scrapbook. He feared exposure of old guilt in connection with Wayne Russell's death. Where was I when all this was going on? In Tonopah. Horse feathers. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Back to Tonopah. They got a nice easy case of cattle rustling over there, and I know I can pin it on the guilty guy because they found him under the cow. All right, Doctor. Is it over? Are you cleared? Did you think of that liquid smoke gag all by yourself? Well, Pop and I worked it out together. Oh, Jimmy, I think you're wonderful. Number two son's present idea strictly his own, but not bad as example. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>